Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland, and in this episode, we'll be reviewing the Pro Series Version 3 Load Cell GT pedal set from the guys at Simworks. Modeled after actual pedal sets used in V8 supercars and FIA Ferrari 488s, they sure do look the part. Sporting pneumatic dampening and linear magnetic position sensors, I'm looking forward to putting them through the SRG review process and see just how they do. So, let's get to it. Now for our Closer Look segment on the Simworks Pro Series V3 LC GT pedal set. <laughs> kind of a long name. Right, before we get to the actual set, let's go over what we get in the kit real quick. Got a couple of stickers here that we can use. Nice. We got a nice spiral bow manual, actually a hard copy manual, but you can also obviously download this from their site in PDF form. We get a heel tray. And this is, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this because of the length it adds to the pedal set, but I'll figure that out later when we get to the mounting section. But all this is made of steel, all right? There are some aluminum bits on here and we'll get to those. But all the steel is powder coated. It looks like we have some laser cut or water jet cut bits here for their logo. You can see a little blue background there. Sim works. And yeah, nice welds everywhere. Here's the, show you one right there. And all this is done in house as far as by and by hand in house by Sim works as far as the construction of all this stuff. We also get some stainless steel bolts or hardware fasteners so we can put things together and bolt the pedals down. The Damper set, all right, we got a kit of dampers here so we can change the resistance on our pedal, the brake pedal. We also get a cable, and this is a USB-B to a USB-A cable. And nothing special here, two meter, no ferrites on it or anything, but plenty of length though. I do like it as a two meter, so it's easy, it shouldn't have any problem reaching your PC no matter where you have this mounted. But then again, you never know. We get a couple of tools here, or a few tools. The usual fare here with the generic looking there we go there. Allen wrenches to make adjustments on the pedal set. They also include a nice wrench though. This is a nice chrome vanadium. I call it vanadium, vanadium. <laughs> anyway, a nice, decent, open, closed end eight millimeter wrench. And we get this guy, this little jewel. And this was a surprise. This is, and this is, this is what's cool about custom pedal sets or custom pieces of SIM hardware. The manufacturer sometimes go out of their way to just do something a little extra that from a mechanical point of view, from mechanical guys like myself, really sticks out. And that is this ratcheting wrench here. It's a 10 mil wrench. And yeah, it's got that ratchet function. You can hear that. I don't know if you guys have ever used one of these, but they're very cool to use when you have enough room to get the thick part in next to where the nut is. But yeah, it, like I said, it's, it's little things like this that makes some manufacturers stick out a little bit more than the rest. And I really like that. Of course, some people might look at it and go, big deal. <laughs> right, let's talk about the pedals themselves. So what we have here is obviously a three pedal set. We have the throttle, brake, and clutch. And all of these bits are steel as far as the pedal levers and the base plate. The, it's, uh, these pedals are actually mounted to a 3.2 millimeter thick base plate. I think it was 3.2. Now I, I'm second guessing myself, so let's take a look at it. I'm gonna take a look at it anyway, because of the angle it's at. Yeah, 3.2. 3.2 steel plate. And the pedal levers are actually made from the same materials. And they, everything's welded together. It's a very industrial looking set of pedals to me anyway. I really like that kind of look to a set of pedals. Just to get it done, hardcore, bang on it all day long, and you're going to end up hurting yourself more than you'll ever hurt these pedals kind of look to them. <laughs> right. And the welding is very good. Whoever does this welding for them is doing a very good job. It's obviously, they know exactly what they're doing here. These plates here that form these pedal levers are 3.2 millimeter steel plate. And you can see the welds here. Let's see if I can get a little closer here and get some light on them so you can see them. There they are. All right. So we've got one, two, three. And of course, on the other side, we have them also. So yeah, very well built. Yeah, you could bang on this with a hammer and dent it maybe, but you're never gonna break that, I don't think. So all the pedal arms are made the same way. Oh, while well, I have it sideways, we've got the Simworks logo again on the brake and on the clutch pedals. Again, some kind of a laser or water cut set up there. We have also a weld sticking out down here, a welded tab, if you will. And this is for their own systems, their custom systems. They make their own custom cockpits, and this is a tab to mount it to their cockpit. Again, 
Very nice weld. It's a little three-piece metal unit there. You can see the welded parts there. And I already said it once, I'm sure, but all this is obviously powder-coated black. And what else we want to talk about as far as the construction? Nice construction on the back here. You can see they've got some welds here going on. And where these pedals are actually mounted on the plates, and this is not easy to see. i got one here and one here. They're little tabs that, are, that they welded these on with. It's really hard to see them. Ah, these are heavy. One there and one there. Okay. And those are holding on the blocks that these pedals are actually mounted to the steel plate with. And let's see if we get a picture of this. I'll get you a shot real quick. You can see the big lugs there. There's four bolts in each one of these. I'm not sure how that's showing up there. There we go. On each one of these pedals, which makes it very, very secure, very, very stiff. And, but also brings up the issue of this is a pedal set that you're not going to be able to adjust laterally in individual pedals. Of course, the whole set you could, depending on how you're mounted, but you can't do it on the pedals themselves. And it's kind of like if you bought one of those Tilton set of pedals, the hydraulic units, the same kind of deal. But we do have an adjustable pedal tops here, pedal pads that compensate for some of that, especially the brake pad. You can see here it's got a slot in it. And of course, we just loosen these two screws and it'll slide either to the left or to the right and closer to the accelerator or further away, further away for the left hand, or rather not left hand, left foot braking technique. And of course, I might scooch it a little closer over here to the throttle when I'm using the heel and toe technique, which brings us to the throttle pad, which you can see that has a little tab sticking out here on the side, which actually facilitates the heel and toe maneuver, right? So your hand's there and you reach over and hit it there. So you don't have to come all the way over and hit a thin piece of strip of metal here. So again, attention to detail on these pedal sets. They were made for replicating what you feel in a V8 supercar or a FIA GT type car, like a Ferrari 488, something like that. And that's the way these pedals were designed. And I'm sure there's a couple of little compromises in between there to make them feel like one and the other. <laughs> so probably not exactly like one or the other, but yeah, good compromise in between you would think. Now, what else can we talk about here? Again, the construction is just solid as a rock. This thing is a very heavy set of pedals. It's 16 pounds and 13 ounces for this pedal. I'll show you a shot of it there. And we also have it converted to the rest of the world's measurement system, which is 7.610 kilos. Again, a very substantial set of pedals, even though we have aluminum in the back here. Let's go ahead and get around to the back and take a look at what's going on here on the back. First off, the biggest thing we notice are these pneumatic cylinders on the brake and on the throttle over here. And we have just a straight rod here, and this is a, I believe that's an aluminum rod. Yes, that's an aluminum rod, connecting rod with the rod ends here. And they call this the, an over clutch design. So when you're pressing on it, it, it's using a straight rod. It goes back and works on this rocking mechanism back. But we'll look at each pedal as we get there. This is just a basic overall view of what's going on. So pneumatic with a spring. And of course, this is an adjustable spring, like a coilover kind of setup with this ring here. And we'll look at that later. We have the accelerator pedal here. And again, the pneumatic cylinder is going to have these little pieces here. And we'll get closer looks later of these little filters here so it doesn't suck any dust in when it's being used. There's probably a spring in here and a plunger for the air pressure part. So yeah, again, we'll take a closer look at that later. These over here are not dampers. You may have thought they were dampers when you first saw them. I got one over here and I got a shorter one over here where the clutch pedal is. And that's because of the difference in the stroke differences between the throttle and the clutch. And what these are actually are LMPTs or linear magnetic position transducers. Right, and that's basically a Hall effects, is the easy way to look at it. It's kind of a Hall effects sensor, position sensor. And I, I got a cutaway of one here I'm gonna show you, even though it's not the exact same one that he that were installed here. But it gives you a general idea how it works. And so yeah, so we have contact less actuation here for the position sensor, right? So instead of just having a potentiometer on here, they're using these, which I really like the idea of that actually. So yeah. Um, we'll find out how accurate that is actually when we're actually using them. But yeah, we'll get there when we get there. Anything else here? The brake pedal has a little swing arm back here or a linkage that acts like a swing arm. And of course, that's an, this is an aluminum part, I believe. Yes, that's an aluminum part, so it's anodized red. And yeah, this is the, where we're going to be adjusting the tension. And, and this is how the pe brake pedal works. By the way, this is a 200 kilogram load cell in this brake pedal but because of the geometry of the pedal mechanism and how it works, 
it's maxed out at 140 kilograms of force, which is plenty, I would imagine, for replicating most of the serious race cars out there. Right. So I guess that's about it. There's a, also a USB board in here. I'm going to pull the cover off and show you that just because. But it's it's a Leo Bodner USB board. The I uh, forget the uh, 3836 or something like that that has the load cell magnifier on or amplifier rather on that circuit board. So again, all top flight looking kit here. And you know, for the price points this comes in, it's shipped. Uh, it's really, uh, I'm, I like what I see here. It, it looks like you're getting, definitely getting for what you're paying for. So yeah, just everything's so heavy duty. So what we'll do next, anything else I want to talk about here? Um, yeah, I guess that's about it as far as just, you know, overall closer look and see what we get in the kit. What we'll do next is come back and start looking at each individual pedal and see how it works and the adjustments available for it. Now let's take a look at the throttle pedal and how it works and the adjustments available. First off, the throttle pedal's faceplate, which is aluminum, has three bolts in it, as you can see, or three screws. And if we look around the back, there's really no place. Let me get my map going crazy on me. You can see that we have the screw holes here. And we got one down the bottom you probably can't see too well. But there's really no other holes in this lever to adjust this as far as going up or down with it. You can still adjust it, though, if you really want to. But you're going to be making very large adjustments if you do. The centers on these three screws are the same. So if I took all three of them out, I could actually move the whole pedal up one section. right? And this is about two and a half inches or so. right? So... It's, it's a bit of a, a reach there. And yeah, it's just so high when I did it. I actually did it once and it's just so high, it really doesn't make any sense. Now, you might be able to, you might be able to use it if it goes low, but I think it's just too low too. The range just isn't there. Now, if you absolutely had to tweak this and get it to where you wanted, you could always drill some more holes, right? So no adjustability really there is built into it. It wasn't meant to go up or down, but it is possible. Now, we also have a little screw down here. Now, this actually applies to all three of our pedals. And I'm just going to do the adjustment on the throttle pedal because it works the same on all three of them. And this is an adjustment for the angle of the throttle pedal. And I'm going to turn this sideways. And you can see right now the throttle pedal is pretty much even. Let's see if I can get that lined up there. Even with the brake pedal. And that's the way it comes from the factory. So if I wanted to set this back, let's say I'm pushing on the brake pedal and I want to be able to reach over and blip the throttle for heel and toe. So you might want to adjust your throttle pedal further back from the brake pedal. Have a little offset there so as you press the brake pedal, you come, your foot kind of comes even with the throttle pedal at that point and then you can blip. It depends on your style and what you want to do, obviously. But this little pin here, not pin, but screw. And I'll get a little close up of it here for you. Okay, this guy right here. It's got a little nut on here. It's an 8mm nut that locks it down. Now tilt it up, you can see more down into the pedal end there to where it's doing. It's just resting on the bottom plate here that supports all the pedals and you know everything's bolted to. So it's a very simple matter here. You take your eight millimeter wrench and you'll put it on the nut and just loosen it up like that. And once it's loosed, I usually take it and just kind of spin it up a bit all the way up to the head because I don't know what it's going to take to get the pedal where I want it to be. So I might as well just go ahead and put it all the way up there. Then what we'll do is turn it sideways and that way we can get a look at the angle we have on the brake pedal. And I'll get my four millimeter wrench out. And this is a ball in which again is very nice because getting straight up against it is kind of hitting the pedal. But I can actually get off angle here and make the adjustments. So as we screw this down the pedal will actually move towards the rear. See how it's moving? And it, it helps if you obviously take a little pressure off of it when you screw it down. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and screw it all the way down to see what the range is. And there it is, maxed out. All right. So now you can see we have a lot of difference between the angle on the brake pedal and the throttle pedal. But again, this is extreme, and I would never run it like this. But just showing you what the range of the adjustment is. I would probably have just a hair offset from the brake pedal and I would just keep pulling this back running it down until I had it where I thought I wanted it going the wrong way there actually going back up so you got to run it counterclockwise to get it to come down that's a little bit too much yeah maybe 
Maybe right about there, right? When you're done, simple enough. We just go ahead and spin this nut back down. Easier to do it with your finger than try to get the wrench out of there for every turn. And then we'll just get our wrench in there and snug it up. Really don't have to tighten it down a lot because I don't, I don't suspect this is going to be moving. But there we go. All right, so now we've changed the angle. And again, I might change this again once we get there. Right, so that's the front adjustment on the pedal. Let's go around to the back and see what we get here. All right, let me get you on a close-up angle here on this. Now, this is the pneumatic cylinder that obviously is taking care of the duties of dampening and spring return of the throttle pedal when we're using it. And it's, it's really done quite nicely. We've got some very large uh, rod ends here on the top and on the bottom. And no, actually, it's not on the bottom, but on the bottom we have a more of a threaded cylinder look. Let me give you a close look there. So this is actually threaded. And this collar apparently we can thread up and down on that in the assembly process. So back to this. This has a piston in it. I'm not sure where the piston is located in this cylinder, but we also have two breather filters here. That's what they call these things, breather filters. And what that allows this to do, because this is pneumatic, so it's using air pressure, plus there's a spring in here because when we push it down, it pops back up. So we're pushing against the spring, but we're also pushing against air pressure in the tube itself. And that gives us that dampened feel when we're actually using the throttle. Okay, so air is being sucked in here when we go down and being pushed out on the bottom filter down there. In fact, if I take my finger, and this is something I really can't show you, but if I take my finger and put it over that filter, it's definitely harder to push it. It gets dampened more, right? And if I put my finger up here, not so much, because I believe the piston's located further down here, so we have more area here to compress the air than we do down here to, before we bottom out going that way. So, and I'm actually going to pull one of these off so you can take a look at it. I'm not going to pull the whole thing apart because these pneumatic cylinders like this, unless you have some maintenance to do on it, there's really, you really don't want to, you know, <laughs> unless you really have to. But I wanted to show you this, how this filter is kind of cool filter here. It's a mesh. Get a, there you go. A very fine mesh there, and this is brass. And I think this is a four micron filter. It might be a different one. You can get them in different sizes as far as the filtering of what they'll filter as far as the size of the particle that this thing will filter out. And on the bottom, uh, back here, you can see it's got a pretty big hole here. You can also buy these with smaller holes in them. Same thread, but just a smaller hole. And what that'll do is it's harder to push the air out of it or in it or suck it in or push it out depending on which way we're going with the stroke on the cylinder. So right now, these are pretty wide open. And yeah, again, you can get smaller ones if you wanted to adjust it. Of course, a small one would, would increase the dampening, kind of like me putting my finger on top of it there. I can really feel that. And if I do it here, it's hard to tell if there's a real difference. It, it's a little bit. In fact, I can feel the air coming up against my finger here when I'm doing that, right? So it is, you can fine tune it with different sizes of breather filters. That's what they call these things, breather filters. I'm just gonna take my wrench and snug that back up because I just want to do that for the demo. Don't want to get it too tight because you don't have to. <laughs> right, so that, that feels like it's doing great now. Right, so simple enough the way this works. Now we do have an adjustment here as far as pedal travel, all right? So right now the pedal travel is at the maximum. And you know, in the camera, it doesn't look like a lot of travel, does it? I mean, if you push that throttle pedal back. But when you're actually driving, it feels like there's more. <laughs> so yeah, it looks can be deceiving. So how we adjust this is there's a little locking nut here. And then when you screw that down, this collar will not move. Okay? But when we take it, and t you have to take it off. You don't just loosen it. And the reason you have to take this off is because it will interfere if we spin it with our linear transducer here, right? So we have to take it out, put it aside, and then we can spin it freely. And I'm spinning it actually in a clockwise direction, which brings, obviously, the collar comes up. And if I wanted a shorter stroke, that's what I would be doing and just bring it up like that, and then whatever setting I have, then it doesn't matter where this screw hole is or where the hole is here. I would just screw this back in and lock it back in that position. If I can get it started here. There we go. And again, you don't have to put a lot of pressure on this thing to do the job. 
and just kind of snug it up there. And now, obviously, we're going to have a shorter stroke than we did before. So that's how we adjust the stroke on the pedal. And that's really about all the adjustments we have here, right? So, yeah, pretty simple and not much to go wrong either. And yeah, it, it feels pretty good in the hand, but obviously in the hand is not underfoot. And we'll, I'll make comments about that once I get to that point. I'm probably going to be putting a lot of, I'm going to put this back down so I have maximum travel. And again, I'll demonstrate why we don't leave that nut in. See how it's kind of hitting that? And you don't want to obviously bend or cause any damage to this rod here because that will throw everything off, I imagine. Right. So what we'll do next is, yeah. We'll, oh, yeah, that's right. We don't have any adjustable faceplate. We do have an adjustable faceplate when we get to these guys, and we'll see that when we get there. So we'll probably do the brake next. So now let's look at the adjustments we have on the brake pedal. First off, we'll deal with the faceplate or the pedal pad or whatever you want to call it. And it is adjustable in back and forth, up and down, and actually can tilt too. But to get to that, before we get to that rather, let's go with the pad itself. It is adjustable. You can see there's actually a couple of, well, two slots cut in here on the top and the bottom. And these are four millimeter socket cap head screws, or bolts, and we just loosen those up a little bit. Doesn't take much, and then we can slide it around. And I'm gonna slide it over towards the throttle pedal because I'm gonna be using this in a heel and toe type of configuration. And when I'm done with that, I'll probably push it all the way over to your left, my right, <laughs> and tighten it back down for a left uh, foot brake type of configuration. And I think that's going to give me plenty of space here that make it comfortable enough. But right now I'm just going to put it over to the right and just, you don't have to put a lot of torque on this, just snug it down. It's a very thick piece of metal here. It's actually, let's see, let me get a, see if we can get our little meter on it here. Turn it on would help. I believe it's like eight mil. You guys can see that there. Yeah, eight, 802. So yeah, that's eight millimeters. And the clutch pedal pad is actually the same as the brake pad is as far as eight millimeters. Let's put it up there real quick. Yep. Okay. So very substantial as far as the aluminum pieces that we have on here. So we can adjust the faceplate. We saw that. Let's turn it around and look at the way we can adjust the whole pad assembly. And that requires loosening these two bolts here. And remember, this is one of the reasons why they gave you this nice 10 millimeter wrench that has a ratchet function in it. Because all you have to do is put it up here like this. Make sure you're going the right way. And then it kind of turns your, you can just do both at once and it becomes a very quick action to loosen up these bolts. Very neat. If I can find the bolt, there it is. And very quick. Or you can just hold one and do the other one. <laughs> very neat. So now that we have this loose, the pad can do a few things. I'll try to get it to where you guys can see this. All right, there's the bolts there. So, yeah, it can tilt up, right? And we can tilt down. We can come forward or we can go back. Is it, that's the position I have it in. And I don't have any tilt or anything to it. And you can actually raise it up or down. It's kind of tough to get it to go up or down, but you can get it to go up or down. And it has more adjustment than you're seeing here. But one thing you have to be mindful of on this brake pedal, there is a bolt where this, this bolt right here is. Let's see if I can show you on the close-up here. There's a bolt right there, obviously, holding that pad on there. And that's going to interfere with the bottom of the lever here. So we may have to have it out a bit before you can actually take it down. And it's stiff to get it down. <laughs> well, stiff is good, though. You don't want to move it freely too much on you. So there we have it. You can actually do a lot of different... Uh, minor tuning here with a pad that can go in all these different directions. I really like the feature that this has because it's just something that once you have your pedal set somewhere and you have most of the things, you have your the, the screws down here adjusted for your angles, then you can come up and do a very micro adjustment, very small in increments of what you need to get that perfect feel for your, your pedal position and your foot position in your cockpit. Right. 
So let's go around to the, to the back part where all the adjustments are. Get this a little closer for you guys. All right. Now, we have a rod end that you may have seen in the closer look on the very top here, connecting through a very thick bolt and some aluminum bushings in here. And the adjustment here is obviously for the spring, and that's the preload. And it's very simple to do. You can see mine's actually out a bit. Let me turn it sideways so you can see that. I've got a little bit of space between the actual adjustment ring that's got that nice knurled finish to it and the actual top of this pneumatic cylinder. And it's just a matter of turning that clockwise or counterclockwise. If you turn it clockwise, it's going to tighten up on that spring, which is going to give us more preload on the spring itself. Now there is a limitation to how far you can go up. And I just found that by accident by tightening it all the way up because I like to do, you know, when I'm adjusting and playing with these things for videos and testing it, I like to take it to the max adjustments everywhere I can, see how it works. Right, so you can't take it but so far, and you'll know once you get to that point, you'll, you'll have like this clunk when you, you actually use a pedal. We're not there yet because it's nice and smooth. But you have this like this metallic clunk. But I actually, I'm going to turn this back down a little bit here where I had it before. And again, this is all personal preference where you want the feel to be as far as your preload when you first press the pedal down, right? So there's another adjustment here, and that is for the damper itself, the bumper, if you will. And there it is. I'm going to kind of tilt it up, give you a better look at it. And this is actually connected. On the back of this cylinder, we have a unequal lever arm here, a rocker arm, if you will. And it's connected. The, the center of it's right there. You see the bolt? I don't know how well you can see that. But there's the bolt. It actually rotates on. And you can see that there's less lever here than it is going out towards where the bumper mounts. So that gives it the leverage it needs to work the way that the engineers at SimWorks decided, came up with how they wanted this pedal to feel. And yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of trial and error trying to get that dialed in exactly where they wanted it to. Now, let's talk about the bumper adjustment itself. There is a knurled steel knurled piece here that we actually turn to add preload to the bumper. And you loosen it to obviously take preload off. And here's the thing about this. Let me go ahead and put this back down so you guys can actually see the action here. If you look back here, you don't want to have this back of this actuator resting on the metal because then you're just pressing against the metal. You're not getting any rocking action like that. See, I'm actually making contact with that metal, back of the metal plate here that's part of the floor for this pedal mount. And so you have to have a certain amount of preload on there anyway. And you would probably want to anyway because that's very soft. I don't, I don't yes, um, that's too soft. And so what you would just, if I tighten this down, if you watch carefully, in fact, I'll use this as a little indicator, the diameter of my little pointer here. And as I tighten this down, it should be able to slip behind there as that gap widens. So I'm turning it and turning it here. This, let me get it actually, well, I'm trying to show you this instead. So. Yeah, I'm turning it, and it's actually coming up off of that, and there we go. I can actually get it in there now. Now, my final adjustment is actually more than that, probably twice as much space from the back of this. And that's kind of how I, I, I'm i gauging where I, where I was before in a previous setting. So, yeah, it's kind of nice to be able to look back here and see where the gap is in that way because of how many turns you do on this nut over here. Now, speaking of this nut, it's... It can get difficult if you want a lot of preload on, and you and it's hard. It's not the easiest thing to get the right angle. You can flip this around, spin these pedals around. I think the best angle I found was like coming in through like this. Oh, well, you guys are gonna see that in between them at an angle, and then grabbing the nut. There's the nut, and grabbing it that way and doing it where I can get the most leverage on it. But even so, after a while, it it becomes. You know, it's a little hard on your fingers, this neural, this rough knurls on here. Now, you need them, obviously, for the grip, but it's a little rough on your fingers, and it can get hard to turn if you really want to put some, some serious preload on the bumper. And of course, that's all personal preference. So here's what I did, and I'm, I'm not saying you should do this, <laughs> but this is what I came up with just as a, a stopgap. I'd like to see this nut here actually have... Instead of just the knurls on the sides, let me get a close up of this so you can get this off to show you guys. I would like to see maybe a, a nut, a 10 millimeter nut integrated on the top of this. 
And that way we can actually get a wrench on this when it becomes too hard and it starts biting into our fingers and it just becomes hard on your hand in general trying to grip it and turn it. And yeah, it'd be nice to have like a, a 10 millimeter nut sitting on the top, something like this, right? Integrated into the whole piece. And I'm sure they could do something a lot more elegant than this. <laughs> in, in fact, they probably machine this, when they CNC machine this, they could actually leave a 10 millimeter nut piece on top, I would think. Right, so here's what I did. No big deal here. I just took some fender washers and they're just washers with a six millimeter hole in them and a lot of space on them to touch each other and they'll rotate against each other this way. And that makes it easy to turn. And of course we'll have the nut. So what I did was come in here like this and just put it on there, put the nut on. Let's see if I can get this nut started without it falling off. And once you have that on, of course, we can just spin it down, right? So now we can actually spin this down with our fingers, even though it's just a nut, a little bit. But now we can take that nice 10 millimeter wrench they gave us and use that to adjust it. And I'm going to show you here what I do here. Well, I'm trying to get a better angle on it so you guys can see. I usually have it my hand in here like this, and that's going to block it. And I turn it around the other way. You guys can see it. There we go. And then just put it on there. And of course, you got to have it in the right direction, which I don't have it in the right direction. You flip it over and then start tightening it. Right? And that'll actually go pretty quick. Even though you don't get to move it very far, it's still better than getting your fingers in there and getting on that knurled piece. And yeah. And you don't want to be banging too hard against the, your nice powder coated steel on your pedals either. I'm actually tapping the spring, the metal spring that's on the clutch assembly over there. So I'm not too worried about scratching that, but yeah. And it doesn't take long. And again, we're, we're bringing the back of that. If you can see that we're watching this right here as it comes off the back of the plate as I'm doing this tightening. And again, it depends on where you want it, but this makes it much easier, as you might imagine, to make adjustments to your dampening on the bumper itself, right? Very clever design here. I like the way this they, they came up with this. And like I said before, I'm sure it wasn't something that you know was easy to do. They had to test a lot of different things. The length of this arm down here, this rocker arm, is compared to the length of the top part of it. So yeah, all that matters when you're pressing on the brake pedal. Now another adjustment on this brake pedal. Currently it's in the easiest position. I'll show you that right there. We have three positions for this. And because of the, the lever effect we have on here, as we go down, it doesn't get easier. It actually gets harder. And again, we have, as I'm trying to, let's see, let me find something I can show you guys. The bottom of this, or not the bottom, but the, the way this is done, let me just fold this paper up. And we use the clutch pedal for that. There we go. And you can see that there's actually three individual holes with a flat back here instead of just a slot, right? I really like this because it's, it's, it's not going to slip. If you had just a slot in here to adjust that, then no matter how tight you get it, it seems, and I've you know, been doing this for years, they always end up slipping sooner or later, and you have to go back and retighten it. But no worries here because of these notches they have over here for this adjustment. I really like that, and it looks like more manufacturers are starting to, to do that kind of thing, and that's great news for the industry in general, if you ask me. It just alleviates a, a, a problem that's always been there if, it for as long as I can remember with slots. Right, so what else we can talk about on this brake pedal? I think that's it. I think we covered it all. Not a whole lot to adjust, and again, there's enough adjustment in here. I think that most anyone could use uh, any, like I said, anyone could have a, a, a setting here that they like. Now, one thing I am going to do is, if you guys will bear with me here, actually, I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to take this back off. And we're going to take a quick look at the actual durometers. There we go. That didn't take too long. Again, it, the magic of the ratcheting wrench. So we're going to take this bumper out because I want to show you guys the durometers, different durometers on the bumpers here. Put that aside because remember we have, let's move these guys out of the way, four of these. And we have two different sizes of each color, the blacks being the harder than the red. Let's see what they are. Let's see. We'll go with the big red first. Now, these are going to be the same durometer, but they're going to squish differently because they're different sizes. So if we got one is 
taller than the other. Get a focus here. I have this in telephoto mode, so that's why it's focus is kind of slow here. Right, so you can see one is actually thinner than the other one, which means this one will compress more than this one will before it maxes out. So that gives us a different feel. So both of these, let's see. Let's put this on here. I don't know how well you guys are going to see this. But and I like to do a couple of tries first just to see where it seems to be settling. And this one seems to be settling on 80. Let's try this one. Yep, 80. So we got 80 on these, and let's see what the black ones are coming up as. Ooh, 92, 93, somewhere in that area. And the smaller black one should be the same. Yep, 93. Okay, so that's about a good range, I think, to get pretty much any feel that most people would want out of this brake pedal. Remember, this is set up. It, it can do 140 kilograms plus, is what they say on their site, to a max of 200 kilograms that this load cell in this brake pedal is rated for. So, yeah, if you were putting on the small black one, the hardest one, and then compressing it tight, you wouldn't get much movement out of the pedal besides the pre low we have on the spring up here. But again, all this is subjective. Everybody has a different way of wanting this done and the feel of their brake pedal. But I feel like there's a, there's plenty of range in here, I think, to satisfy most people who are looking at, you know, a thousand dollar pedal set in that range, a pedal set in that range or above. Actually, there's many, there's a few that are above this price point that, uh, yeah, I think that if you're looking in that price range that this is going to give you plenty of adjustment for getting where you want to be. Now, of course, you know, not everybody's the same, and I'm sure there's somebody out there who probably would say, no, I never could get it right or whatever. But anyway, I think that there's plenty in there for that adjustment. I'm going to put the red one back on after I finish this segment. So that's about it for the brake pedal adjustments. It's, again, I, I like the, the design here, and I've been driving it. I like the feel of it. I was able to get it dialed into where I, uh, it really is uh, easy to be consistent and repeatable. But we'll talk more about that once we get to the driving segment. Now let's look at the clutch pedal. Now the clutch pedal is the same as far as the brake pedal and the face, or the, rather the pedal face or pedal pad, that it is completely adjustable as far as in and out. And it can swivel one way or the other. So yeah, exactly the same as the brake. Right, now other than that, there's really not a lot of adjustment going on in the clutch pedal. And we'll go ahead and look at a close-up and see how this works. First off, we have a, an aluminum rod here that has a rod end on both sides. A little pointer here, down here and up there. And this is what they call a overclutch. And that means that all the pressure is pushing over on it. And we have a rocker arm assembly here. And it's got a... Let's go ahead and get that over here like this. There, that's better. So it pivots on this main bolt here. And... Obviously, we have the connecting point here and the another rod end down here connecting this cylinder. Now, this cylinder actually contains this rod that goes down through it. And this spring here, obviously, is going to give us the tension. This is the linear transducer for our position sensor. And when you actually use this, because of the way this rocker assembly is set up, it actually gives you that first push that you feel against a real pressure plate in a real clutch in a transmission, which is engaging the throwout bearing and it's pushing on the springs that cause the pressure plate to lift off the clutch. And after it lifts off the clutch and you keep pushing through, it stops. So you can actually hold it right there at that position. And you can actually feel it kind of get loose as it gets to that point like you would see in a, or actually feel, in a clutch pedal. So it's hard to get going, but then it gets smooth and easy at the end of the stroke. Right. So, other than the adjustment down here in the front, like all the pedals have, where we can actually take this... Oh, it's kind of loose here, so i got to be careful what I'm doing. The screw down here that we actually can adjust the rake of the clutch pedal that we actually saw over in the, if you saw the throttle pedal segment, then you know what that does. So we can actually change the rake. And that's about it. 
So not any, not a lot of adjustments on the old clutch pedal. So, yeah, but you know, I, I don't know. It, my theory on the clutch pedals is this. When you're moving them slow, you can feel different clutch pedals have different mechanisms to simulate that push through of the spring plate or the springs on the spring pressure plate and it makes that pressure plate lift off the clutch so you can actually change gears. So this kind of replicates that and a lot of pedals do also, but when you're in the heat of battle, and this is one thing I've, I've found, that if I'm doing a lot of heel and toe and I'm downshifting through like five gears or four gears and I start to lose the feel of that pressure plate a bit. It seems like you're just slapping the clutch basically at the end of the day. And that's what you really are doing. So the faster you do it, the less of that effect that you feel that's being simulated in whatever linkage or whatever system they're using in the clutch to simulate that. So I'm not sure how this one's gonna do. It feels like pretty he a heavy clutch, but again, doing it by my arm is not by no way as much pressure as my leg can put on it. So I think it's gonna be, I, actually I'm, I'm looking forward to using this. I think it's gonna be an easy clutch to use and it's gonna give you the realism of being able to bottom it out as you slam on it. And yeah, when the pressure plate spring is all the way engaged. So again, we're just gonna have to drive it and you know, I'll be able to make comments more to that later on. The, by the way, the rod end up here is not adjustable. It's in a regular hole here. In fact, you can see on the brake pedal, let me show you there, that hole is right here. Because remember, the, the brake pedal is, lever is the exact same cutout as the clutch is. So we're using that hole over here for it to capture our rod end, right? So yeah, other than that, there's not a whole lot to see here. And I guess that about covers it as far as looking at the individual pedals, how they're set up, you know, what they're gonna be like when we, hopefully, what they're gonna be like when we use them. So all we have to do now is figure out how we're gonna get this pedal set mounted on our P1 rig. So we'll get to that segment next. All right, so now you can see we have the pedals mounted. And here's how I ended up doing this. Obviously there's, plenty of ways to get this done. And because I'm mounting this to existing 40 series profile that will be running perpendicular to the side of the pedals, I decided to go ahead and use some 40 pro from actually 40 series profiles that I had laying around. And of course we have some M8 bolts in here. We have three on each side. You see the other side over there. And I mounted my old heel plate. This one I've had in the SRG for Geez, for a very long time. And it's served me well over the years. <laughs> Just a regular piece of aluminum. And I had a bend of uh, 20 degrees put on it from the people that I bought it to. I think I bought this off eBay. And the metal shop obviously could put it in the bend, I mean, the bender, or the brake as they call them, and bend that angle in for me. And then it's just drilling holes. And yeah, this is some, some of that diamond styled aluminum plate, all scratched up, messed up now over the years. It could take, these, it's taken a pounding. but. It's getting the job done here. And I wanted to show you the bottom too of how I ended up attaching this. You can probably see from the side I have some 20 series profile in there. Actually, it's 10 series, not 20 series, 10 series. And yeah, so not much of a lift. It's, it's a little bit shorter than the actual heel plate that came with it, but that doesn't matter. I put my shoe up there and I should be okay as far as getting this done. So my foot's right, the ball of my foot's gonna be right on the brake where I need it to be. And let's see, we'll go ahead and look at the other side here, or underneath, if you will. And you can see it's just a double profile. So it's actually helping support the plate behind it. And you can see I actually, I had to use some L brackets here. See these? And they're single side, one side, double side, and the other because I wanted to stretch it out and get the reach I needed to get close to the front of the pedals here. But the, it's going to be nice and supported here. There shouldn't be any flex at all, especially with this double piece going all the way across the plate on the bottom. A little tricky to get this done because you have to attach this bar first. And I did that with a couple of corner brackets here. There they are. And these are actually 40 series to 10 series brackets. You can actually buy them like that. So if you're stepping down or up from a run series to the other, you can just buy them like that and it works like a champ. 
So then you, you put, this is what I'm using to hold the profile. I don't need a lot of pressure to hold this profile because remember, it's just supporting the weight of my feet. So yeah, and then you get the right distance. And once I had this set up at the right distance, then I came back and slid <laughs> the pedal plate, the top of this plate into the profile because I really couldn't get in here and do the bolts and things once I had this piece mounted. So I just kind of slid it in after that. And then we can get in with our little ball head driver there and plenty, I mean, it's a little bit of an angle there, but not too bad. It was able to tighten everything up. All right, so now we're ready to go. We got our heel plate. Now this is actually, as you can probably see, a bit long. <laughs> so if I was gonna keep this set up, keep this pedals and be running them as my main pedals, then I would actually go in and maybe get some different profiles and, and cut the or cut these and make them shorter so they don't stick out as much. But for testing, this is going to be fine. I got plenty of room behind them, so not an issue there. But yeah, I would, I would do something a little bit better looking, a little more custom once I decided if I was going to be using these all the time. But yet has yet to be seen rather. Right, so we're all set up. Now we're going to go put it on the rig and see how it looks there. By the way, we're going to be using these guys, some 40 series corner brackets. I'm going to put several of those. I'm going to, I think I'm going to put three on each side because that's the way my profiles are laying. I have a double 40 series profile, which is a 4080, and then I have a 4040 profile behind that on the P1 rig. So we'll put one in the back and we'll put two of these in the front on both sides. Not only that, it will secure it very well, of course, but not only that, it will also be able to adjust very easily back and forth. So the reach will be really easy to adjust just by loosening three nuts. And if you have one of these drivers, like this, then it's easy just to go down the side, bang, bang, bang on both sides and then adjust where you want it and tighten it back up. Do it all the time when guys come over and use my rig. Right, so let's get them over there and see what they look like. Now I've got the pedals mounted and you can see what I ended up with. Just like I said in the first part there, we have three 40 series gosseted corner brackets mounted to the P1's 40 series profile. And this is working out really well, actually. Again, this is easy to slide it back and forth if I need to do a quick adjustment. And of course, you can use the rack to slide it back and forth too. So we can actually fine tune this to meet, I think, anyone's needs. Right, so yeah, looking good in there, I think. I like the way these pedals look. They've got some cool things going on in the back. All right, so I'm gonna walk around the front here. This is what it's gonna look like from the dance floor. And we'll go ahead and move around to the other side. And again, we can see those corner brackets. Very solid mount. I have no doubt whatsoever this is going to be able to take a beating. Right. So what we're going to do now is, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get in the actual rig and see how that works out. Okay, we're getting in. And I, actually, I'm, I'm sitting back further than I normally do because I'm running this Fanatic wheel, this DD2, and it's, you know, with the hub to run your own wheel, you have to use the universal hub, and then with the extension, it's, it's pretty far out here. <laughs> so anyway, but it works, no, no problem. Important thing is what the pedal's doing. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually happy with the feel I'm getting on this brake pedal. It feels like, yeah, it's not too stiff. I was worried about it because it is 140 kilogram max on this load cell. And sometimes those brake pedals, like the Ultimates, are really tough on your knees when you're using them. So I will do some fine tuning on this, of course, with the preload maybe or something. The throttle, you know, I was worried about the throw being too short on this. And I've got the collar all the way back down, but it actually feels pretty good. I think that's plenty to actually be able to modulate everything I need to. And the, yeah, the, the clutch, you can feel like you're, you're pushing through the spring on the pressure plate where the, you get that feeling when your throwout bearing is engaging the spring and yeah, and then it just kind of stops and it kind of sits there. There's really no pressure to push you back until you take pressure off the pedal. Just a little bit, obviously, but yeah, it really kicks you back once you let go of it. So yeah, overall here, I think this is going to be, let's see if we can do some I think this is going to be okay. Right, and the heel plate I have, it has my heels level with my bum back here where it sits deep into the seat. 
where exactly where I want it. So yeah, we can do some long stints in here and be very comfortable with putting a lot of pressure on the, the brake pedal. So yeah, the only thing to do now is get in this bad boy and drive it. So here we are in iRacing, once again at Sebring in the Lotus 79. A proper car to test some pedals out doing some heel and toe shifting. First off, this pedal set, once you have it underfoot, it's one thing that strikes me just right off the bat was, you know, you can pound on these things and they just feel very, very solid. There's no really give or bend to them. You know, that they push right back at you and asking for more. <laughs> it's, you know, they don't care if you step on them hard and, and slap on them. I'm, you know, just slapping the clutch. And, I, and by the way, the clutch here, we might as well start with the clutch, has a really good feel to it, I think, for doing the heel and toe type of shifting technique. It's just, you don't have to push it too far. Like the clutch pedal on my Wave Italy's that I use a lot, that you guys probably seen in a lot of my videos, uh, you have to push the, the clutch pretty far down to get it to go all the way to the stop, even on the shortest uh, reaches. But yeah, not here. I like the way that this feels. And remember, this is modeled after the V8 supercars and for FIA Ferrari 488 type pedals. So maybe that's why. And speaking of which, uh, well, yeah, we're in the supercar now. <laughs> Talk about a car that is hard to drive. If you guys think you're a real good driver and you, don't, and you feel like you need a challenge, hop into one of these cars and drive it, drive it, it at speed. <laughs> it's definitely not easy. It's just so much power that you really have to be able to modulate the throttle here. And this throttle is very good at that. I didn't have any problem modulating the throttle and putting it exactly where I wanted it to be, in, especially in a car like this. When you're coming out of the turn or you're in the middle of the turn, you're starting to accelerate out of it, you have to be very, very careful with this car because it will spin out on you in an instant and you don't even know what happened. <laughs> even going down a straight that has just a slow curve in it and then straightens out again and you have it floored all the way down, it'll break loose on you just going, just, just because the weight shifted a little bit on the other side from the car suspension. So yeah, very tricky, very challenging car to drive. But yeah, this throttle handled it well and you can see I'm doing the heel and toe with no problem here. Really, really having some fun actually. This is, this is one slippery car. And yeah, so the accelerator pedal though, I will say doesn't have as much travel as some of the other pedals that I have. And that may or may not be important to some people. I didn't find it to be a hindrance. I was able to modulate exactly the way I wanted to without any issue. So again, that's, that could be more of a personal preference kind of thing. And yet, yeah, but still no problem there. The brake pedal itself, and again, here we are at the ring in the Ferrari 488. I thought I'd get in that car if I was, I was gonna do the V8 supercar. And yeah, here again, it's just, everything just kind of comes together. You, you forget about the pedals. And that's really what I think signifies to the driver that they're doing the job that you need them to do. And they're not flexing and bothering you with some flex in them when you're pushing hard on the brake pedal and that kind of thing. Uh, speaking of the brake pedal, this one, I was able to get it tuned in. It did take me, it wasn't right away, but I was able to get it tuned in exactly where I wanted it to, to feel. So when, it, when I had it pressed all the way down, it had the feel I wanted to that I could recognize as just before locking up every time. And of course, a load cell brake pedal allows you to do that anyway, but there's still the feel that you're getting as you're getting that final compression on that load cell to, just before the wheels lock up. And to be able to trail brake and gently lift off and modulate that so if you do it correctly, trail braking can really help you get into a turn correctly so you are really in the right position when you accelerate out of the turn. And yeah, that, it's, this worked great doing that. So, what else can we talk about here? The pedal tray itself that it's sitting in. It, the, the way I had it set up here with those two pieces of profile that I showed you in the mount, I didn't have a piece of profile in the back going across. And there was a very minimal, I don't even know if you can see it here. You may, if you really look careful, I had to really look at it while I was pushing on it. A little bit of flex from the brake pedal section of that plate where it connects to the bottom of the plate back there. And that was because I didn't have anything underneath it. The pedals, the, the rig or the cockpit, I should say, that SimWorks actually makes their own cockpit that this pedal set was designed for actually has a flat floor there so there's it's not an issue basically because it has support all the way across the pedals there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep using these pedals because i do really like them and i'm going to 
set it up to where I'm just going to put another profile across underneath there, right in the back part to just support, give it that little bit of support there. And then, you know, no more issue as far as having any flex at all back there. But again, when I was driving, I didn't notice it, of course. It, you know, it didn't affect the accuracy or the, the consistency of my braking at all. It just, you know, came together as, as just a, a really, it's a great set of pedals. I mean, if you saw a closer look in uh, the adjustments on it, you saw how these things are made. There's linear uh, potentiometers, there's magnetic linear potentiometers, very accurate, never had a skip anywhere. Everything was really nice. And again, I don't know if that contributed to the smoothness that I had on the throttle as far as my modulation, because I really felt like I could control the car with the throttle, which indicates a good throttle pedal, obviously. But yeah, you know, it, it couldn't hurt to have them as far as being contactless. That's going to give us a longer life cycle. So you have to appreciate that. And, you know, in, in the end of the day, to, to get just to aesthetics, it, it really kind of blends with the pedals anyway, with the pneumatic cylinders on the accelerator and on the brake pedal too. So yeah, just a great set of pedals. I'm, I'm just having a blast using these. I, am, I Again, I haven't taken them off my rig yet, so that's usually an indication to me that I'm, I'm really liking them. And of course, that doesn't mean that you're gonna like them. <laughs> and I always try to say that. You know, it's all subjective at this point as far as what you want. You might think there's not enough travel in the accelerator pedal. I mean, this is all subjective stuff from person to person. And unfortunately, we can't use them in, in a bunch of different pedal sets and decide which one we like. It costs too much money. but. I can tell you that it, it, it did satisfy me and it, I've had the heel and toe technique here really came together for me on this. I really like this set of pedals for that. It just, just comes together really sweet on the heel and toe. That, that was probably the most impressive point for me personally. I just, and I like to do heel and toe, not everybody does. Obviously there's probably not many people who do do that, but I do suggest that you try it if you ever get the chance because it's a blast driving a car and shifting and doing the heel and toe just your body is totally, completely involved in the, in the process that way. It's just very, very immersive. Right, so we'll just go ahead and yeah, finish out this lap on the ring if you want. If not, I'll see you over in the final thoughts.
Final thoughts on the SimWorks Pro Series V3 GT pedals. I like it when a sim hardware company takes a different approach to designing a sim racing pedal set than, well, most other manufacturers out there. Using pneumatic cylinders for a dampening feature is something I have not seen in the SRG for, well, a long time. While using air compression as a dampening solution is not a new concept, I think it fits this application quite well. I believe the guys at SimWorks have done a good job at tuning these pneumatic cylinders well for the job at hand. The result is a smooth, repeatable feel in the pedal stroke. When using the throttle pedal, I found it easy to modulate the stroke here, providing enough sensitivity to be as accurate as I need it to be. While I found there was plenty of travel range for me on the throttle, some may want for more. The brake pedal provides a lot of adjustment range to satisfy most, I think. Once I was familiar with how the pedal adjustments worked, I had no issues dialing it in to my liking. And with a load cell that has a maximum of 140 kilograms of pressure available, again, I think most will be able to get the brake feel that they want. The clutch pedal was able to provide a feeling of pushing through the resistance of a pressure plate spring and lifting the plate from the clutch's surface. It does have one of the shortest travel ranges of others that I've tested. And I wasn't sure how this would affect the heel and toe work when driving, but was pleasantly surprised at just how well the short travel lent itself to this type of, of technique when you're actually using the pedals. I was up and running using heel and toe in no time at all, happily stabbing away at the clutch pedal and never missing a shift because of anything, well, that the pedal was doing. <laughs> I actually became quite fond of the clutch pedal's action and the travel. Now, the overall quality of this Pro Series set is very high, consisting of three millimeter thick powder coated steel plate in all the right places throughout its construction and joining everything together with a very good looking set of welds. When you have this set in hand, it looks like it will be able to withstand a lot of punishment for a long time. This is the first pedal set I have had in the SRG that used the linear magnetic position sensors. Contactless sensors should ensure a long life cycle here, I think. Not only did they function without issue throughout my rather aggressive testing, <laughs> they also lend themselves well to the overall look of the pedal set, I think. Now this pedal set comes in at $1,000, $1,025 shipped to the USA from Australia. So you will want to consider that when going over your options when looking for a pedal set to meet all of your sim racing requirements. Overall, I consider this set to be a top tier unit that will hold its own against other top sets available to the serious sim racer. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.